What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeO.com, and I am back with my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Wednesday, April 7th. Now be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all of our other content goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to these sim results as we get closer to lock. And finally, let me know in the comments section who is your favorite and least favorite of my contenders for today's slate. We're rounding out the bottom of my top 10 with D'Angelo Russell, Anthony Edwards, Teo Maladon, Malcolm Brogdon, and Tony Bradley on the outside looking in. There's no value to find on this slate, guys. It's a weird one. Who will be my favorites, my top five plays for today? It's time to find out. First up at number five, we're going to the center spot. 6K Wendell Carter Jr. projected for almost 33 fantasy points. The goal is 43. He's in the optimal lineup 19% of the time. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr. has been playing a ton of minutes for this Magic team, but they are walking wounded. I'm a little nervous about the minutes, but when all is said and done, I'm giving him 28, and I think that there's upside for that to be 30 or 32. He is going to be the future of the Magic. It doesn't appear that it's going to be Mo Bamba anytime soon. So 1.17 fantasy points per minute for Carter, 15 points, 9 boards, and... The biggest benefit, a huge pace up spot against Washington. They gained 4.6 possessions over their averages. That is massive. Robin Lopez is questionable. It's possible he is out. That basically leaves just Alex Len as a legitimate center or Wendell Carter Jr. is going to get to deal a little bit with Rui. I think that's great for someone like Wendell Carter Jr. So at 6K, starting center for the Orlando Magic in the best pace up spot you can find, that works for me. Now at number four, we're going to small forward, power forward, eligible Alex Pogoshevsky. He is 5,600, projected for 30. The goal is 41 and a half, and he is in the optimal lineup 20% of the time. We're looking at 0.9 fantasy points per minute because this team is just missing everybody. No Shea, no Dort, no Baisley, no a bunch of other guys, no Horford. I'm, I know that I'm missing like two or three more dudes. They have 10 active bodies. Two of them are on 10-day contracts they signed two days ago. So 22% usage for Pogoshevsky, 13.6 boards, three assists, over two stocks, pace neutral spot against Charlotte, but that's not something we're super worried about here. These minutes are ultra secure. You have the ability to roster Pogu at small forward and power forward, plus forward and utility. And honestly, at 5,600, works perfectly in a balanced build, which is exactly the way that you need to be building right now with the lack of value that we have. Next up at number three, we're going to the small forward, power forward spot once again, but we're paying down $4,100 Doug McDermott, projected for 24. The goal is 36. He's in the optimal lineup 20% of the time. Now, I have no idea what's going to happen with the Pacers. McDermott could look a lot better than this as we get closer to lock. We're not going to see Miles Turner, who got hurt yesterday, which really I don't even, I shouldn't even get into because it really breaks my heart. Brogdon, Sabonis, still going to be questionable. If Sabonis is out, McDermott is going to be an uh, even better play than he is right now. Even if Sabonis is in, however, I expect him to play a lot more at the center position, which should open up more time for Doug McDermott at the four. 4,100. I gave him 28 minutes. I think there's upside in that number. I'd be surprised if it was significantly lower. 0.85 fantasy points per minute, neutral usage, 15 points, four boards, and that's pretty much it. He doesn't really do anything else out on the floor. However, they're taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves, a team that is absolutely dreadful defensively, and this becomes a nice pace-up spot for Indiana. They gain 2.6 possessions over their average. That's more than a fantasy point in addition for McDermott here. So... Pay close attention to the news. You want to watch the deeper dive. You want to watch Live Before Lock tonight because we need to know the status of Malcolm Brogdon and DeMontis Sabonis. If they're out, get even more McDermott than I'm saying right now. If they're both in, which is my assumption right now, Doug McDermott is still the number three uh, play on the slate. I shouldn't have, like, that was confusing to me. Doug McDermott is my number three contender today right now with Malcolm Brogdon in and Sabonis in. See, see what happens when you say it with some confidence? Now at number two, we're going to the shooting guard small forward spot. Obviously, you know that I'm a, a huge favorite of that designation, Jalen Brown. He's 7,800, projected for about 44. The goal's 49. He's in the optimal lineup 23% of the time. You get him at shooting guard, small forward, guard forward utility. That's as good as it gets. 36 minutes, 1.2 fantasy points per minute because Kemba Walker sitting out for rest today. 
and Evan Fournier out with health and safety protocols. So massive rate bumps for Jalen Brown, 33% usage. That's 27 real points, five and a half boards, four assists, two stocks. Now I understand that it's a pretty big pace down spot against the Knicks. That's usually a problem, but with Kemba out and no Fournier, that sort of changes the equation a little bit here. This more than offsets the pace down nature of this game. The additional usage, getting him to 33% usage at 7,800 with guard and forward eligibility, no matter what happens on this slate, other than Jalen Brown being ruled out, Jalen Brown will be one of the five best plays, bar none for me. Now, before we get to that number one contender, one last reminder, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Head on over to Twitter, follow me, at Josh Engelman. It's the only place you're going to get any updates to my sim results as we get closer to lock. And then finally, in the comment section, let me know who your favorite and your least favorite contenders are for today's slate. And if you see, if you don't see a name on there that you think should be listed, let me know who that player is. I want to know what I'm missing out on. And finally, the number one contender on this slate, and I can promise you, will not be the number one contender as we get to lock. That's small forward, power forward eligible, Miles Bridges. He is 5K, projected for 29. The goal is 39. He's in the optimal lineup 24% of the time. This is an incredibly difficult slate right now. But no Gordon Hayward now. I have Bridges in for 32 minutes, 0.9 fantasy points per minute, 18% usage, 14.6 boards, two assists, a stock and a half, you're getting increased minutes at a price tag that's going to come up with Gordon Hayward out. Uh, Miles Bridges will probably be like 5,500, 5,600 in a couple days. Grab him now. You get the dual eligibility. It's a matchup against Oklahoma City, a team that is barely fielding an NBA team. Most of these guys will not be in the league next year. That's exciting to know for this matchup. So I don't expect him to stay here. As value opens up, these guys that are in value spots in the mid-tier are going to slowly and but surely go away. But that won't change the fact that Miles Bridges is a good play today no matter what. He just won't be the number one contender. But for now, at 8.27 a.m., Miles Bridges is the number one contender on DraftKings for today's slate. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Wednesday, April 7th. There's a FanDuel version of this video around here somewhere. Watch that. Process show already in the books. Go watch that. Strategy show with Lafayette today at 10 a.m. You should watch that. And I'll be on Live Before Lock with Greg Ehrenberg tonight from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. You can't get rid of me. Whew. Good luck tonight, everybody. We'll be back again tomorrow with another edition of The Contenders.